I want to cover the differences between the, the EDM, JDM, ProDrive P1, um, GC8 headlights that have the leveler motors in them um, and compare that to the USDM lights that don't have the leveler motors but have this little uh, adjustment thing. And I've got these both taken apart. Um, there's plenty of how-tos out there to do it, but uh, preheat your oven to 220 degrees, put a pan on the bottom, um, and get your your headlight kind of disassembled as much as you can. Take the rubber socket off the back, take the bulb out. It'll have some metal clips around the edges. Take those off as well so you're not messing with them after it's been in the oven. And 220 on a pan uh, for about 12 to 15 minutes. Um, I did this one in, in 12. This one didn't want to come apart as easy, so I, I put it in for another three or four minutes. Uh, but once you take it out, you can kind of grab the glass and grab the headlight right here. Um, do it from this side. Don't don't try to do it from this side because that, that tab's more fragile. These are a lot beefier. And uh, you can kind of start to pry it apart with your hands enough that you can get a little screwdriver um, in behind the edge and just slowly pry. Uh, you don't want to force it real quick. You just want to do a nice steady motion and you'll feel it prying apart. If it doesn't want to pry apart, uh, put it in a little longer. And then as you're separating it, this um, adhesive stuff around the edges is going to want to stretch. And you want to try to be as careful as, as you can and kind of cut it or pull it away with a screwdriver and, and go slow and kind of jam it back um, into this track because you don't want it to snap and then fold over, roll over the edges and get into this chrome finish because this does not clean off easy. You don't want to touch this any more um, than you have to. So let's start with the, the differences. Obviously, this motor is, is the big one. Um, I'm told that you can also use motors potentially from a 2004 to 2005 STI. You can see how it's got the round nub at the bottom. And then this is the US DM1 and you take a 10 millimeter uh, socket and you put it on this and you spin it and it'll it'll screw this in and out. You can see that's got threads on it. So that's the, the main difference. Um, these back housings are almost the same. You can see this is the JDM one. It's got the provisions for the motor. And look at that hole that goes in the center. That's Look, look how, how big that is compared to uh, this USDM one. If you look at the USDM one, it's still got the holes for the motors, uh, but you can see that hole is a lot smaller. So if you're going to use the USDM back and you've got the motors and you want to put them in, you're going to have to drill that hole bigger once you get it all apart. Um, and then this is the kind of mechanism. You can see how it pivots so it can go up or down. That's the same between both of them. I've, I've seen people say that it's different, but I've tested them both and it has the same travel. Uh, it's got the same pivot points and everything. Uh, so if we look at the, the back of one of these, these are also identical. Um, you can see over here on this side, it's got this black thing in there. That's got threads in it for an adjustment. And that's this adjustment right here, this 10 millimeter uh, extension thing that sticks out. It spins that threaded rod and that can move this side in or out. And that's the same on the USDM one. It's got that same adjustment there. And then if we look going on the other side, so this would be the top part. It's got this round nub that threads in and that's just the pivot point. That snaps into to right here and that's what it actually pivots on. So when I turn this, that's what gives you your travel. And then the major difference uh, between them is is right here. So this is on the opposite side of that pivot. This has a white plastic thing in it. And this white plastic thing on the, the JDM, the ones with the motors, uh, it accepts the ball socket for this motor. And on the USDM one, it's got another black plastic part in there. And that's identical to um, the one that's on the other side that I showed you for this for this back nut. So that's, that's what this threads into, and that's why you can't just get the motors and swap them directly to the USDM lights. That takes a little bit of work. Uh, you have to drill out that plastic on the back to make the hole bigger for the motor, and then you need to find something to put in here to accept that ball socket. Uh, so if you have 
the the EDM, the, the lights from like a ProDrive P1 that have the motors, you have that part. But if you have that part, why am I doing all this work? Uh, and I'm pretty much doing this because the lights that I, I bought from overseas, they're not in the best condition. One of them, uh, when it shipped to me, the, the tab broke off it, this whole mounting tab on the other light. And then if we look at this chrome inside, you can see it's kind of burnt and uh, worn out. It's got some cracking on the bottom. So this didn't look that good. And my USDM lights, the finish looked really good on them. Uh, so I'm taking the best of both parts to get the motors and have the nicest finish inside. So if you buy some EDM lights that have the motors and they're in good shape, just use them. Uh, if you've bought the motors or you need to combine them like I'm doing, uh, you need to drill the hole out on the back or you could just use the EDM one, I guess. Um, and then you need to find something to put in here. Uh, so obviously I'm stealing that from the EDM light, but other people have got creative. You can take like a, a nylon spacer and they've hollowed it out with a Dremel and cut two slots in it, try to, trying to make something that this ball can snap into and not pull out super easy. Uh, one guy went to Ace Hardware and they have those little bins that slide out with bolts and nuts. Uh, and he said there is a furniture bin and he was able to find something in there that you didn't have to modify too much to work to work with uh, so you can do that but i'm going to steal the the white part um, someone also said that if you find an older set of usdm headlights maybe from like the 93 to 98 error if you take those apart they don't have the screw thing here they have the white socket as well so you could sacrifice an old set of headlights to get the actual uh, part that you need here if you didn't want to try modifying something or or using something that wasn't meant to be there to begin with. Uh, but that's pretty much it on the differences. The glass seems to be the same. These, these things seem to be the same. These are the same. It's really just that bigger hole on the gray stuff and then that little uh, clip thingy in there. All right, I'm gonna go over the install. I just wanted to point out some things that caused some trouble for me. Uh, I put everything in the oven, I got them all back together, I put them in the car, and one of the lights didn't seem to be working right. It would kind of move when I moved the motor, but it, it would only go between zero and one. You could hear it moving between one and two and two and three, but the lens didn't seem to be moving at all. And these are the old lights that were in there. You can see they, they can rotate quite a bit. And when I was watching it, I originally thought it was something rubbing. And you can see here, up in this corner, there's kind of a uh, nub that sticks up. And if you were to look under this chrome piece here, you'd see there's some wear where it rubs. And then down here in that corner, it also rubs. Uh, so I experimented actually taking a Dremel and grinding that little top corner off. You can kind of see it there, it's right right here where it sticks up and rubs. And then also down here taking off a little material. Um, both of those areas get covered by the lens so it's safe to do. Um, and that seemed like it helped a little but it still was not working right. And what it boiled down to was the actual motors that went into the back. Here I'll walk over to the car. The actual motors that went into the back that little ball on the end of them wasn't snapping into the socket. It was just pressing it. So it would kind of push the light forward and then it would retract. And depending on if it was rubbing or not, it would get stuck and it, it wouldn't appear to work right. And I could put my hand on the bulb and I could actually wiggle the, the housing inside. It would actually go up and down. So something wasn't right. Uh, so what you have to do on those motors is there's an adjustment screw, you can see it right there. There's also one over here. You need to take that and you need to back it out. Um, so if you have the wiring hooked up, you can switch it to zero, which will extend it as far as it, it will with the motor. But then you can take a Phillips screwdriver or eight millimeter socket on that and you wanna extend the threads out. So at position zero, it sticks out like 2.5 centimeters. So you can extend it out to three centimeters and then you can actually unscrew the, 
threaded part with your hands a little bit to get it out even farther. And then reach your hand into the into where the, the bulb goes. Don't put your hands like inside it if, if you can help it because you don't want to get fingerprints on the chrome lens, but you want to hold it there because it's got a pivot. And when you put the motor in, that extension thing that you put out will stick out farther and you'll be able to hear it kind of snap into place into the ball socket. If you just put it at position zero and try to put it in, it's not gonna snap into place and it may feel like it is just because uh, there's like a little rubber grommet on the end of it and that's causing some resistance but the ball socket needs to actually snap into that housing and it and it wasn't i was able to see in there with the flashlight uh, so once i did that the, the problems went away both headlights felt nice and solid they both come up and down the same amount and i'll do a video after and at night to to show you when i have someone else to operate the switch uh, but there installed the wiring wasn't too bad and i'm going to cover that in just a little bit but here is basically the the power wire for it that goes through a fuse this is for the hella horn someday i'm going to clean this up and uh, here's the six pin connector that goes to it and it runs right under the support is zip tied under there and it comes out here and this goes to the other one and that goes all the way through the firewall into the car. Now, I originally had every intention of, of putting it here, but the switch is, is different. These buttons are, are a different receiver slot than the switch, so it would kind of fit in there, but you'd have to grind some material out behind the back, and it'd be a little bit too skinny and be a little bit too tall. And uh, I, I was going to try to make it work, but then I noticed that the little coin holder over here I pulled that out and it's an exact fit for the switch. So I have it there. I've got my DCCD stuff, my power folding mirrors, and now I've got my headlight uh, leveler switch, switch right there. So now let's go over the wiring. And this is a horizontal switch that's in the ProDrive P1 or UK uh, GC8s. And this has seven wires coming off the back of it. And I was not able to find the OEM diagram for this, but fortunately it's not too hard to figure out. Um, I was able to find the diagram for the 0405 uh, US STI. And this has six wires that, that come off it. So six wires in the US, seven wires uh, for, the, for the UK one. And it's not difficult to figure out what these wires do because if you were to switch the switch to position zero and then start checking continuity on the back, you would find two wires that have continuity. And then if you were to change this to position one and repeat that test, one of those two wires is gonna have continuity with another wire. And if you keep doing that, you're gonna find that one wire has continuity to four other wires, depending if you're on zero, one, two, or three. And that one wire is gonna be your power wire and the other four wires are gonna be the position wires. And if you did that on the US switch that has six wires, you'd end up with only one wire left, which by default would be ground. If you do it on the, the JDM or UK switch that's got seven wires, if you do that, you're gonna be left with this uh, black wire or this other wire right here. So one of them's ground, one of them's illumination. And I actually bench tested it and it doesn't seem to matter which one you use as ground and which one you use as illumination. It still works the, the same. Um, and there's a little difference between both switches. So the horizontal one, when the illumination is on, this zero, one, two, three are all lit up. So it lights up all the numbers. On the US DM switch, they did things a little different. They're able to eliminate that wire and they just ran their power wire to this uh, fuse number 12, which is, which is, uh, I believe it's the illumination circuit. So the only light that is gonna light up is the position that you're, you're on. So if you're on position one at night, you'd see the one lit up. You wouldn't see the zero, the two, or the three lit up. Um, and they're able to eliminate a, a wire by doing that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so these, 
are the actual diagrams. I opted for the US switch just because it's less wiring and where I mounted the switch, it made, it made sense. I wanted it kind of in line with the car and I, I didn't want to see um, numbers going sideways and I couldn't mount it like this in the car. So I went with the US diagram and then the, the wiring is pretty simple. This illumination wire that goes to the power wire of the leveler switch, that's just the illumination wire for the radio that I ran it to. Um, then I've got four wires. Those are the position zero, one, two, three that go through the firewall out to the, to the headlights. And then I've got a ground wire and this just goes to a bolt in the, the center console area. And then out at the headlights, I've got the four position wires. I've got a, a ground that's just a bolt in the engine bay. And then I, I grab power right from the, the battery with a, a fuse in between it. So the wiring, wiring is very simple uh, to do. And you can figure out which one of these is position zero, one, two, or three. It doesn't exactly tell you here, but if, if you were to hook up power to it and just use a, a multimeter going through the through the positions, you'd, you'd see 12 volts coming out here. Or you can just look right here. This is the, the connector that goes on the back of the switch. Pins one and five are not used. There's only six pins that are used. And these are their, their uh, numbering based on the schematic. And this is what they are, position zero through three, your power and your ground. Um, I did go through and calculate the JDM wiring just in case anyone wanted it. And because I couldn't find the actual uh, manual, I don't know if these numbers are right, meaning these pins are numbered the same way that they're numbered in the manual. Um, but how I numbered them and how they match up here, this, this is true. Um, and this is how they, they work. So I'm looking at this as if I'm looking at it right here. You can see I crossed out pin three because there's no wire there. You can see there's no wire in that spot. And if, if you go through, um, these are the positions. Here's your power and here's your, your ground and illumination. And like I said, if you flip six and seven, it seems to work the same way. Um, I just chose seven as ground just because it's, it's kind of a black wire. And when it goes through the harness, it goes through a black wire. And that's, that's the other little thing is these wires actually change color. This is a, a cut pigtail from a UK car. So for each function, I have what the color is here. That's gonna be on this side of, of the harness. Um, and then in parentheses, I put what color it goes through on this side of the harness. So between the switch and the connector, you can see the, the colors change. So if we look at one right here, we see this white with red stripe wire up there. It goes to a green with white stripe wire up there. And I've got that as position zero right here. So white with red stripe, and it goes to a green with white stripe. So this could be useful if you don't have this pigtail and you had to source something else or you're just cutting this and soldering directly to the wires. And then this down here applies to the actual car connector. So let's walk over there. And the connector on each headlight is, is the same. The pin positions are the same. The coloring is, is the same. Um, so I made this diagram as if I was looking at the connector just like this. So this white wire I'm calling pin one, this red with black stripe wire in the middle I'm calling pin two, this blue with yellow stripe I'm calling pin three. And those are, those are how I numbered them and those are what their function is. And then these are the colors. And you can see that then when they go through the connector, and they tie into the motor, the colors actually change. So this white with red stripe wire, it goes through the connector and it goes to a blue wire. And then this red with black stripe wire in the, the top center, it goes through the connector and it goes to a blue with black stripe wire. And you can see I've, I've got that outlined here as well. And the other headlight is, is identical. And then if we look over here, this is where I grounded things. So I've got a, a ring terminal here, and that's my ground for, for both headlights, and uh, or headlight motors, rather. And then this is where my power goes through this 
fuse connector to this terminal. And I may change this up someday or clean it up or combine it with a horn just so I don't have two wires floating around there. So here's the headlight during the daytime. It's on position zero. We're gonna move it to position one, position two, position three. And now back up to zero. We'll go over to the other one, same thing. It's on zero, go to one, two, three, and then back to zero. So I'm in my GC, it's about 8.30 at night, and I'm gonna give these a try. I've got my parking lights on right now. If I look down here at the side, you can see the little zero. And I can turn this dial. You can see it's one, two, three. Go back to zero. I think my finger is in the way there. Uh, so here we go. Turn my headlights on. These are low beam. So this is zero, one, two, three, two, one, zero, and I'm gonna go to high beam. Oops. So there's high beam, you can see the little blue indicators on. That's two, two, three, two, one, zero. That's zero, one, two, three. So the higher the number, the lower it goes zeros up higher. So there we go.